And we are back in chapter one, exploring data. This time we're taking a look at quantitative or numerical data and how we might graph that type of data. We've got several objectives in this section. So we're going to make and interpret dot plots and stem plots. We're going to learn how to describe the overall pattern of a numerical data distribution and identify any outliers. We're going to be able to identify the shape of a distribution. We're going to learn more about that and kind of have a little mnemonic to help us out. Make and interpret histograms of quantitative data and then compare distributions of quantitative data. So let's get started. The simplest graph that we're going to learn about is actually called a dot plot. And this is where you just stack up dots in perfect rows over the different possible values of the numerical variable. So in this case, we're looking at a soccer team, the 2012 US women's soccer team, and we're in each game. So for example, in one game, zero goals were scored, and in one game, five goals were scored. And this is, you can see some dots all the way on the right hand side, one at 13 and one dot at 14. So once again, these need to be, the dots need to be stacked up in perfect lines so that we can also see what the shape is of the distribution. And we'll learn a little bit more about that in a minute. Or we need to make sure that when we draw our horizontal axis, we label it and scale it straight away label it with a variable name, and then we're going to scale it with the different possible values that of, of the data that we have. So in this case, you can see the different games represented in each one of these cells, and each one is going to represent one dot on our dot plot. That, the minimum value and the maximum value, that's when we're going to begin to accumulate the dots. We're going to make one dot for each one of the times that that number appears in our data. So for example, we only see one zero in all of the data. That's why we have one dot above the zero. When we look above the three, we have one, two, three, four, five dots. So when we look at the data, we see five different times that we see the number three. And way over on that right hand side, you can see that we have one game where 13 goals were scored and one game where 14 goals, goals were scored. And those are the ones represented at the 13 and 14 over on the right hand side about data. And so every time we see a graph, we want to be able to have a good understanding of what's going on. So we're going to be looking at specific things. To begin with, we're going to be looking at the overall pattern. And then we're going to be looking at departures from the pattern. So it, we see the little mnemonic, don't forget your socks. I'm actually going to ask you to do G socks some of the time and socks most of the time. So what do those different letters stand for? And we're going to see what some of the possible shapes are. The O actually stands for outliers. The C stands for center. And the last S stands for spread. And spread is another way of saying variability. So we're going to be looking at all of those. And when we talk about outliers, we're going to follow a specific formula to determine whether suspected outliers actually are outliers. Bullet item that we had, the first S was for describing shape. And when we're describing shape, we're going to be look at two different, looking at two different aspects. One of them is which way does our data seem to lean? And we can, if it looks basically the same symmetric on both sides, we would say that we have a symmetric distribution or approximately symmetric distribution. If we seem to have a lower frequency of data on the right-hand side or the positive side, we say that we have right skewed or data that is skewed to the right. If we have a tail or lower frequencies on the left hand side, we say it's left skewed or skewed to the left. And you can see what these pictures represent here. So the symmetric one is the one where it's about the same if we look from left to right from the center or the peak on the, that's on the dice rolls. When we look at the score data, we can see that we have 
most of the data on the right hand side of the graph it's ho it's higher frequency on the right hand side of the graph so we think of it as a tail on the left hand side and that data is skewed left when we look at the siblings we see a lower frequency on the right hand side and so that is a skewed right graph different distributions and so we would be using comparison words so we would describe the top one as having a uh, unimodal or one peak right skewed data the one on the left or the one on the bottom the household size seems to be approximately symmetric we would mention the center of each one of those we might be using the mean for that or the median for that we'll talk more about that later and then we would also describe how many peaks what's a, that's another way of looking at shape dot plots when we start doing our practice problems for right now let's take a look at some other type of graph for quantitative or numerical data and that is called a stem plot sometimes we call it a stem and leaf plot but in statistics we usually just call it a stem plot and it also gives us a quick look at the shape of the distribution however it also allows us to see the actual values of our variable and both of these graphs are univariate meaning we're only showing the values or the distribution of one variable at a time so in order to make a stem plot we're going to take each number in our set of data and divide it into what we call a stem and what we call a leaf so the stems are going to provide kind of like a tree trunk for us in the graph and we're going to to write them down from least to greatest and we're not going to leave any values off so even if we don't have any data for a particular value we're still going to write it on there and the the extremes the minimum and the maximum are where we begin and end our stems then we're going to write the leaf or the last digit in the appropriate row for the stem then we're going to rewrite the whole thing making sure our leaves are in numerical order last of all we need to make sure that we always have a key so that we can represent we can when we're reading the data we can represent exactly what we we're trying to represent and it's not misunderstood of data female ap statistics students responded to a survey question how many pairs of shoes do you have we're going to construct a stem plot our stems are going to be and in this case it's going to be the tens digit so the smallest number that we need to represent looks like it's 13 the largest number that we need to represent looks like it's 57 so our stems are going to go from one to five now we're going to start writing down our leaves so it's going to be the ones digit for each one of these numbers and you can see we're going to start out but with a zero on the five line and then a six on the two line another six on the two line as we read 50 26 and 26 for the number of pairs of shoes that we're trying to represent okay we talked about just a minute ago that the leaves actually need to be in order so we're going to rewrite the stem and leaf plot with the leaves in order and last of all we need to make sure that we include our key so we know how to read the stem and leaf plot and so the key is in this case four line nine represents a female student who reported having 49 pairs of shoes your key can be written in words in a sentence like this one is, or you can use symbols like an equals sign, but you do need to explain what it is we're looking at with the data. When we draw a stem and leaf plot, we have two few bars, if you can think of it that way. If you think of each one of those rows as a bar of data, then sometimes we don't have enough bars and it doesn't really give us a good sense of what's going on with our data. So. In a case like that one, we split the stems and we can either split it with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 0 through 4 and 5 through 9. We'll take a look at that in our practice problems. The other thing that we can do with a stem and leaf plot is do a back to back stem plot, and that gives us a great basis for comparison the number of shoes owned by the female students in AP statistics and the male students in AP statistics 
and we figure out that we need more bars so we split the stems and because we've taken each stem and split it into two rows we're going to have zero through four on the top row five through nine on the second row and that's going to be for each one of our stems and then we're going to put the stems in the middle and we're going to draw the leaves outward on both sides one side for the female the other side for the male and this gives us a great basis for for comparison so you can start to see how different the two shapes are for the two different groups within our ap statistics students key so don't forget that when you're drawing your stem plots right, we're going to be reading them and creating them and luckily this is one graph that our calculator will also help us make so this is where on a histogram we're we're going to be just as on the other graphs for quantitative data and for categorical data for that matter we're always going to be writing down the frequency or graphing the frequency with which each value occurs within the set of data and in order to make a histogram we first decide if we're going to group the data and if we are we need to make sure that we create classes or bins or groups of equal width and we'll see more about that in class then we're going to find the frequency or the relative frequency of each of those different values that our quantitative variable can take on always remember we need to label and scale our axes and then we draw in the frequency for each one of those possible possible values adjacent bars should touch unless we have a particular group or a particular value that has no individuals and then we see a gap in the data. So here's an example of a histogram. This table represents data on the percent of residents from each of the states who were born outside the United States. So the percent of foreign born residents is the axis and the number of, oh, I'm sorry, is the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis, the number of states. So that's our frequency. And we can see that the largest column is all the way on the left hand side between zero but less than five and there are 20 states represented we're going to have a total of 50 states altogether. so once again if we were going to describe this graph with our socks okay, there are no gaps g for gaps s for shape we see this shape is unimodal and strongly right skewed O for outliers. We don't think there are any outliers, but we could test those last few values on the right hand side where we have a very low frequency. Center, we would need to figure out what the median is of this data. And knowing that we have 50 states represented, the median is going to occur between the 25th and the 26th state so it's going to be the average of those two numbers and that is going to occur in the five to ten column so that second column is where we find our median and then last of all spread and this is where we would either calculate the interquartile range or the standard deviation and we would also include the range of data when using histograms graphs histograms are for the numerical or quantitative data bar graphs are for categorical data they have different features they both have bars yes but bar graphs it's different categories on the axis and for histograms it's numerical values on the axis we're not going to use the counts in a frequency table or percents in a relative frequency table as data we're going to use percents instead of counts on the vertical axis when we're comparing distributions with different numbers of observations so that we can compare apples and apples instead of having counts maybe we took uh, data for 30 female students and 50 male students in order to make sure that we're we can compare apples and apples we can't compare counts so we would have to calculate percentages for both and compare the percentages and just because a graph looks nice remember it's not necessarily a meaningful display of data we want it to be meaningful and we want it to not be misleading those are two things we need to be careful with 
those problems, we're going to see a lot more detail and we're going to learn how to create the histogram.